In today's episode, we're gonna go over a TIG welding torch breakdown. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. I'm a welding artist from Vancouver Island, Canada. I do welding art projects on both two-dimensional and three-dimensional surfaces. And on my channel, I love showing off and teaching the art of TIG welding. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to bounce back, check out the previous episodes. There's a ton of episodes to watch. So for today's episode, I wanted to kick it a little bit basic today. We're gonna to go over a TIG welding torch breakdown and more geared specifically for beginners who are just looking to get into some TIG welding. So today's episode is gonna be part one of two episodes. Today's episode is gonna be an aluminum torch breakdown. The next episode, you can check it next week. We're gonna go over how you set up a torch to most effectively and generally get started with stainless steel TIG welding. So as you can see here, we got two torches. This one's for stainless steel, this one's for aluminum. We're gonna go over this one today. Let's move this one out the way. Beat it, I'm not doing you today. So this torch we're looking at here today is a 26 style torch. I'm going by the CK Worldwide standards of what they call torches. This is a gas cooled torch. It's not water cooled, it's just strictly air cooled or gas cooled, whatever you wanna call it. Now a lot of people hit me up and ask me, is it important that they get a water cooled torch when they wanna start out learning? No. It does help immensely, let me tell you that much off the top. There's many times I've been welding aluminum in here and I just gotta take a break. The torch gets too hot. I'm lucky enough that I can have a couple torch leads in here. So once one gets too hot, I'll just disconnect it from the machine. This whip has a dense style connector. This connector is just basically a quick connect, just literally plugs into a machine. It's super simple, super easy to do. So what I usually do is I have a couple of these guys ready to go. When one gets too hot, I just swap it out for another one. I have a cup and call it set up already in a secondary torch. I just swap it out. It's a good move if you're gonna do a gas cooled or air cooled style torch. It's just, uh, it's another way to keep things moving a little bit when one torch gets too hot. Now, as you can see, this torch head is pretty simple. This is a very basic one. It is not a flex head. Some of them have a flexible neck, so you can bend it in directions to help you get into angles a little bit. As you can see, it's basically just a threaded insert. That hole in the bottom there is where your gas comes out and travels out of the collet body. But I'm gonna show you how to put it together most effectively so that you don't run into any problems once this thing heats up. So first thing I usually do is make sure that my adapter is seated correctly and firmly on here. If you're ever welding and you have an adapter askew slightly, before you know it, you have gas leaking out of somewhere. So you always wanna make sure everything is seated firmly right off the top. The next thing I usually use here is a gas screen. This is a 332 gas screen. It threads in like so. You wanna make sure that this is seated firmly as well. Now I'm using basic welding pliers or MIG pliers, whatever you wanna call them. All you wanna do when you tighten this guy up it's just a little bit more than finger tight. That's it. You don't want to crush it down. Basically what can happen is as the threads on the inside heat up when you start welding, if you have it tightened too much, what can happen is the threads can start to warp because they're under pressure of you tightening it too much. So just a little bit more than finger tight, you're all good. So once this is firmly done up, like I said, I usually put my cup on, make sure my cup is seated correctly. This is a number six cup this is a cup that i pretty much use for most aluminum projects in this studio here uh, very basic good to get you going when you're first learning next thing i do is i will take my inner collet body the inner collet body i prefer to use is the wedge style collet like so it slides in the back then i want to make sure that my back cap i always just give it a little wiggle make sure it's set properly and tighten that up so for all aluminum whoops where'd that go working with clean tungsten in here obviously with most aluminum projects that I'm doing in my shop here, it's a 332. I prefer a 2% lanthanated tungsten. Everybody's got their own preference. I have inverter type machines here. I personally feel like lanthanated tungstens seem to work pretty well for what I do in here. Now, as I set my stick out distance, the stick out distance is referring to the amount of stick out you have from the tip of the cup to the tip of the tungsten. And a good general rule of thumb that I usually go with is my stick out distance is equal to the width of the orifice of the cup. So funny little thing not everybody might know, I didn't know it for a while. Your number, like a number six cup, they're measured in sixteenths. If you have a number eight cup, that means it's a half inch opening. So that means your tungsten stick out should be no more than half an inch. It's just a general rule of thumb. I like teaching people when they first get going learning. Just keep it simple, stick with that rule of thumb. And there you go. So we have our back cap seated firmly. We have our tungsten proper stick out, our cup, our adapter, everything done up nice and tight, you're pretty much ready to rock with this. 
As you can see, I have a slight ball on the end of my tungsten. I prefer to ball my tungstens. When I teach people, whether it's in person or on my online training program, where I teach people how to TIG weld online, we work with this setup here. We keep it very simple. It's pretty easy for most students to get going when they're at more of a beginner stage. Just keep it simple, nothing crazy. So one thing I'll go over real quick here is the consumables we can use and different options we can set up for the inside of the torque. So as you can see here, we got a couple different options. On the left here, we have a diffuser type selection. Basically what this is, is you have an inner collet sleeve. The inner collet sleeve will hold the tungsten like so. And then the whole unit slides inside of this diffuser end here. And then the diffuser goes into the torch like so. And then whatever cup you end up selecting, slides over and tightens onto your setup like so. Diffuser type setups work just fine. I actually welded for years and years just using a gas diffuser like so. I didn't end up switching to a gas lens setup until I was probably 10 plus years into my welding career. So getting started with a diffuser setup, very simple, very basic. Most machines come stock with a diffuser type setup, totally good to go. So putting our diffuser stuff aside for a second here. This is a gas lens setup. This is a setup that I prefer using when I'm doing TIG welding with aluminum. I prefer using these wedge style collets. The other option that you can use is a slit wedge or a split wedge, I've heard them also called. There's a few different names for them, but anyways, you can tell the difference. The wedge style collet does not have this slit opening in the middle. The reason that I prefer to use the wedge style collets is the ones with the slit in it tend to overheat pretty quickly. And then because there's less material to bolster the end of the tungsten, they tend to overheat pretty quickly. They tend to warp, lose their shape. So I definitely prefer the wedge style collets. You will see less distortion and they last a much longer time. So as you can see, the wedge style collet will slide inside like so. Again, this whole unit holds your tungsten, whichever size you decide to go with. And then your cup, whichever you choose, goes over the outside like so. Again. Pretty similar to this guy. It's just a slight difference in performance. I do prefer to use the gas lens setup nowadays, but trust me, I can rip a diffuser setup, no problem. It's all good. Just depends on what I'm doing. If you watched my video and got any value from it, here's how you can repay me. I issue a challenge at the end of every episode, every week. If you enjoy what you see, to go out and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. I'm trying really hard to spread a lot of positivity in the welding scene, and I encourage you as a viewer to go out and do the same thing. I really appreciate hearing from people who uh, take a lot of value from that message that I'm trying to spread. Something as big as helping someone broken down on the side of the road, something as small as just writing something nice on a complete stranger's Instagram, I don't care. Do something nice to spread some positivity in the world. We need it. So again, thank you so much for watching this episode. Next episode on stainless steel torch setup drops next week. For Pacific Arc TIG welding, my name's Dusty. Have a good one. Peace. So for all aluminum, whoops, where'd that go? Working with clean tungsten here, obviously.